The group have dealt with a hidden threat from the town of Barovia, and now spend the night resting before they depart. Dax, back in the tavern, and Genji both have it vividly pleasing dreams of everything they want to be. They're no longer in Barovia and everything is working out perfectly for them. Unfortunately, when they wake up in the morning, they find themselves still here in Barovia. But that brief moment of sleep, it was pure bliss for them. Genji has another slice of pie that morning, which means that they're now out. And when the group depart, he, no long, he doesn't take any more with him. The group prepare with Ismark and Irina to depart and bid their farewells to the town of Barovia and head on Old Svalich Road, heading for safer lands to get Irina to somewhere she can be protected from the evil Lord Strahd. During their travels, they are accosted by a druid in some twig blights and they notice a raven starting to follow them. This raven has blue-tipped feathers and when Genji speaks with it, it simply says Kaw! back to him, which is odd since he can talk to an animal, but the animal simply said call back. It's like a dog saying bark to you. And as they travel, slowly, more and more ravens form up. The group can also tell that they're being followed by wolves. So they can hear their howls and just catch them every now and again in the woods following. Genji tries to reach out and touch their minds, but finds that they're being controlled or directed. As it's getting later in the day, Ismark and Irina point down to an offshoot, to a Vistani camp called Tsurpul, where they know there would be numbers and they could potentially be safe. They're not fans of the Vistani, but know that uh, as long as they don't cause any problems, they, they should be fine. And the group head down. Coming on afternoon, as the group approach Tsurpul's, they decide to disguise Irina and cover up her hair. Genji uses his cantrips to disguise and change Irina's appearance. And the group move in and are encountered by a very friendly Vistani. Hey, newcomers! Come! Come over here! Please sit with us. There is safety in numbers. Join our little camp. As the group join the Vistani camp, Ismark and Irina do keep some distance socially and physically. But the group are happy to enjoy. And the Vistani seem quite interested in their stories. Where are they from? How long have they been here? What is their home like? And the Vistanis are very happy to swap story for story. The Vistani seem to be a very friendly and nomadic people. Their camp here is quite temporarily. And you can see by wagon tracks that they come and go. All in all, these Vistani people are very unlike the Barovians. As the night rolls on, they hear many a story. Even the retold one from Father Donovich about a mage who battled Strahd about a year ago. Some of the Vistani are very interested in the characters and what they have on them and, and what their intent is. And others seem quite happy just to talk and enjoy and share food. As the night goes on, the group are invited to go meet Madame Eva. She is a fortune teller here. And the group make their way over to her tent. Irina and Ismark are less interested, but the group go in and enter Madame Eva's tent. Inside, an elderly Vistani woman greets the group. Welcome, travellers. I've been waiting for you. Please uh, sit down. Ymir, son of Emerson, raised by Marcus and a student of Serena. You too, Genji, child of Obed High. Braces, daughter of a Barbazu and a human. You come from a burning home, poor child, and Hesland, one who has suffered so much, losing a love and companion. So soon upon arriving, Please, let me look into your futures. With that, the lady takes up a deck of cards, shuffles them, and starts to lay cards out in front of her. This card tells of history, knowledge of the ancient, 
This will help you better understand your enemy. The Nine of Stars, the Conjurer. I see a dead village drowned by a river, ruled by one who had brought great evil into this world. This next card I draw tells of a powerful force for good and protection. A holy symbol of great hope. The Seven of Glyphs, the charlatan. I see a lonely mill on a precipice. The treasure lies within. This card is the power of strength and power. It tells of a weapon of vengeance. The monk. The treasure you seek lies behind the sun in the house of a saint. This next card will shed light for one who will help you battle the darkness. The broken one. I see a great ally will be a wizard. His mind is broken, but his spells are still strong. Your enemy, the innocent. This card tells of where your enemy will be and that he dwells in one whose blood sealed his doom. A brother of light snuffed out too soon. For you, Ymir, the raven. Find the leader of the feathered ones who will live among the vines. Though old, he has one more fight left in him. Genji, the tempter. I hear a wedding bell, or perhaps a death knell. It calls thee to a mountainside abbey, wherein you will find a woman who is more than the sum of her parts. Heslant, the donjon. Search for a troubled young man, surrounded by wealth and madness. His home is his prison. Embraces. The artifact. Look for an entertaining man with a monkey. This man is more than he seems. The group pressed Madame Eva for some basic information on vampires. And then after that, come out, find his mark and Irina, and retire for the night. The characters lay there, listening to wolf howls and creatures moving around in the night, keeping them on edge, where Genji drifts off pleasantly, dreaming the sweetest of dreams. And that's where we'll leave it. Until next episode.